Hello folks, I am Aditya Felmani. I love to talk about React Native cross-platform development and how things work under the hood. I work at Grow as a software development engineer and I make your financial journey more easy. Apart from tech, I really, really love to play video games. One of my favorite video games is Red Dead Redemption 2. Absolutely amazing game. I highly recommend it to you to play it. Uh, I have a common social handle which goes by Aditya Pehlwani on these platforms, Twitter, GitHub, PLS, and LinkedIn. Do follow me for more on mobile development and React Native. Basically, everything around mobile. <laughs> so today, we are going to uh, try to understand about the new architecture of React Native with GSI. So what we are going to talk about, we are going to talk about how React Native works today, what are the problems with the current architecture, how JSI solves it, and a small demo of JSI. Uh, so how React Native works today. So we have a host platform here. The host platform can be Android, iOS, or Windows. We have a JavaScript thread where JavaScript and React lives. They communicate via a thing called bridge. They send each other messages. Let's just suppose you want to create a button. So if you want to create a button, the JavaScript thread will send some messages to the host platform and they will receive that message and will create a button. Okay. So as you can see, uh, they don't uh, are, they don't know about each other's existence here. They are talking uh, from a bridge here, right? The communication between these two realms is happening via bridge and it is totally asynchronous in nature, which means the messages which I talked to you uh, about are basically some JSON payloads which are sent from native to JS and vice versa, and it's totally asynchronous in nature. So what are the problems with this current architecture? Uh, first, there are if there are too many operations over the bridge, it ends up choking it, uh, which results in delayed event responses. So consider a scenario where you have some UI state here, and the bridge between the host platform and JS thread is choked with too many actions and too many messages. And at that point of time, there is a tap of button. When there's a type of button, the host platform wants to send a message to JavaScript so it can execute the method, right? But as the bridge is choked here, uh, there's a delay to receive the event which is sent by host platform, because of which uh, it create, created a bad user experience because when the user tapped on the button, they expected a feedback there itself, but as the bridge was choked and because of the delay of the event, uh, it created a very bad user experience. The same goes with uh, things like scroll, a touch or any UI state event. Second is there's a slow startup time in React Native because all native modules are initialized at the start at the start time itself. Uh, we might not even need uh, all of them at startup. We need only few of them. You can see a pictorial diagram here. Uh, there is many things which goes around during the startup, but we are talking about just about the pain points. Next is the new architecture with JSI and CPP will completely solve it. There will be a layer of JSI and CPP and it's solved. <laughs> Don't worry, it's just a joke. Uh, before going to JSI and C++, let's try to get our basics right. So, have you ever thought about how the JavaScript runtime is created in the host platform? Because without JavaScript runtime, uh, we can't execute the JavaScript code, right? Interestingly, I found a class in Java which was loading a C++ library. Uh, when I went to the source code, I actually saw C++ and just like you, I don't understand it, which means this all is gibberish to me. 
but i saw one thing here which was jsc make jsc run time jsc run time okay basically jsc is a, a run time engine which execute the javascript code we have hermes run time too uh, so that uh, with this we are clear that the c++ has created the javascript run time correct which means the host platform talked with c++ and c++ created the javascript run time and the run time lives in the c++ world where basically our javascript code is getting executed it lives under c++ which also means c++ can get uh, some properties like not some properties can get access directly to the runtime and do some changes around it and can access some properties of it because it lives under it next like have you ever thought about how native modules are invoked hmm. so let's try to see out the flow of native module from js first native modules need some unique way to identify the native method because they aren't aware uh, what's what's there on the native side as i told you they don't know about each other existence they talk via messages right so they want some unique identifier to identify the native method next they also need to be aware what type of method you have written in native which is java kotlin or anything whether it is synchronous or asynchronous because they need to handle uh, on uh, javascript side to write third uh, native modules invokes the native method via bridge because everything goes via the bridge bridge does some magic to call the native method correct so the native modules the native module specs are registered from native side via hack so we register a method name a gen module to the global namespace as i told you the javascript runtime uh, lives under c++ correct so the c++ can can get access to this global property which is underscore underscore fp gen native module correct next the native which is like the host platform which is java talk to c++ gets the reference of this method which was registered in the global namespace and calls it so actually this gen module function is getting called by native and it sends you all the information like the unique module id the method id and it whether it is synchronous or not then there's interesting thing here which is gen method it is calling a method a gen method let's try to see what gen method is doing here so it looks whether the type of the method is synchronous or not if it is it calls batch bridge dot call native sync hook with some arguments if it is async it does the asynchronous way which and it is entering the call let's try to understand uh, the native synchronous part because it is easy <laughs> so let's let's see what uh, this call native sync hook of batch bridge is actually doing it is doing something here it is firing a thing called global not native call sync hook but we don't have anything as uh, native call sync hook in global uh, namespace right we don't have anything so how does this method came into the place and how it is getting called interestingly actually this method is registered to javascript runtime from c++ and you can see something here it is all gibberish but you can get some part of it which is runtime global set property with the name of native call sync hook and it calls a c++ method so it was in the end actually calling a c++ method which means javascript code uh, javascript is capable of running a c++ code uh, from a long time also the bridge instance which we made uh, is registered in the global namespace so the native can access it just like the method which we talked about the gen method the, the bridge is also 
uh, defined on the global namespace so the native can access to it via C++. So, time to connect the dots. Uh, the C++ already lives here. In fact, C++ created the JavaScript runtime. The bridge we talked about from so long actually goes from C++. That means C++ already exists, right? And there, uh, JavaScript is able to call C++ methods, right? That's pretty confirmed. Next, what if instead of queuing our messages from bridge and sending JSON payloads, we have direct reference of the native methods via C++ because as we just saw, JavaScript was always capable of running uh, C++ code via the registry, uh, registered methods, right? So what if we have direct reference of native functions? That's where JSI helps us. So what's the role of JSI? JSI provides an interface where you can register C++ methods to the JavaScript runtime. It provides some helper method to handle JavaScript values inside C++. Why? Because C++, JavaScript, and the host platform language would could be Java and Kotlin. These three things, these three languages uh, treat all uh, values in a different way. Uh, strings, objects, array are treated differently there. So it provides some helper methods to handle those JS values inside the C++ sandbox. So how the new architecture exactly looks. So the C++ layer would have bindings, a sort of proxy methods, which in turn will call the native method written in Java or Kotlin. The JSI layer will the JSI layer will help us to register these C++ methods directly to the JavaScript runtime, which we can access via the global namespace, as we showed, as we saw earlier. Third, there is a part name as JNI, which is used in Android. Uh, JNI provides an interface to communicate uh, between Java and C++. It's time for an example. Uh, we will create a method which returns UUID from native to JS. This method would be synchronous in nature. This method would be exposed to JavaScript from the global namespace with the help of JSI. What's the steps? Uh, we will create a simple Java method which will generate a UUID. That's straightforward. Next, we will create a C++ method, which will call our Java method. We will register the C++ method to the JavaScript runtime, uh, which we will access from the global namespace. Fourth, we will invoke the registered C++ method in JavaScript. Sounds straightforward, right? So the execution part. So this is a small code of Java where we are creating a UUID and returning it. Uh, the C++ method signature to call the Java method. I am using plain JavaScript language for easy explanation because uh, we don't understand C++ that much. Uh, we have something named as create from host function provided by JSI. It creates a function uh, which, when invoked, uh, executes the C++ code, uh, which is passed in the callback. And if there are any exceptions, a JavaScript error is created and thrown. Uh, host function expects some uh, parameter, which is the runtime, the function name, the total parameters the function would expect, and the callback. And as you can see, it is calling the callback by passing some arguments to it, which is again the runtime, the this variable of the function, the arguments which are passed, the length of the arguments. Next, we will uh, create a function uh, which is calling create from 
post, uh, which is calling create from post function. And we are passing this parameters, which is JavaScript runtime. And we are passing the method name, which is get JSI random UUID. And we are saying there, is, there should be no uh, argument, uh, arguments to it. There's a callback method. This callback method does the main job here. Uh, so to execute a Java method, we need a JVM because without a virtual machine, we can't execute the language code, correct? So we attach the JVM thread to execute a Java, the Java method. Then we use JNI to get reference of Java method and also execute it. We use JSI to create a string value which can be accessed via JS. As I talked earlier, as there are three languages in place, they treat values differently. So we need a value which can be accessed and understood by JS. Uh, this is where JSI helps us. It gives us help methods to create a value which can be understood by JS. This is the real implementation which we talked about in C++. Don't worry because the main purpose was to understand the intent of code. And if you see here, we are doing the exact same thing. Uh, we are using uh, create from host function of JSI, passing the necessary arguments, attaching a thread, getting a reference of it, calling the method, calling the Java method, converting it to a JSI value and returning it. Third, we are registering the C++ method in the JavaScript runtime, as you can see here, like global.set property, the name and the function which it will execute. Next, we are invoking the registered C++ method from the JavaScript runtime via the global namespace, which would be the global.getJSA random UID, because this was the name which we registered in the C++ layer. Time to connect the dots. Uh, let's go to some code here. As there were too many codes here, let me show you something. Uh, we are loading our C++ library here, correct? Uh, we have a simple method which returns a UUID, correct? We initialize our class, uh, the C++ class module, and pass the parameter of the, the parameter of the JavaScript of the JavaScript runtime inside the C++ layer. If you see, we are doing nothing special here, correct? We are just uh, we call this function install JSA trial with the runtime which we got from Java. We come here and we do all the thing here. We use create from host function. We do this and we register the method. It's already explained, right? If you see it uh, from a close point, it's doing nothing special. It's just a proxy method, correct? These, This is just a proxy method, correct? Uh, doing nothing special here. And if I go to JavaScript now, and now I can directly get access to this function via the global namespace. Global dot get random UUID. And if you see it here, I am having, uh, I'm calling uh, the native method written in Java, completely synchronous from JavaScript uh, with the help of JSI. Now, Coming back to the docs, as I showed you, the method was doing absolutely nothing. The CPS method was doing absolutely nothing. It was just a proxy method. Correct. So when we hear about turbo modules, it's just a new way of creating native modules. If you know what is the schema of your method is, the parameter it would expect, and the written type of it, this whole C++ proxy method could be code chained. And this is what turbo module ex ex actually do, they will code gen all of your C++ proxy methods and will return you the method from the global namespace. That means everything you can directly call a method, uh, native method from JavaScript, totally seamless in nature, which is quite amazing. The another part is 
Now, <coughs> sorry. So, sorry. I was talking about now native modules doesn't need to be initialized at the start of time. With the help of JSI, they can be lazily initialized, which can improve the start of time. Second, the event responses uh, problem which you talked about. Now, as everything would be seamless in nature, there would be no bridge there, which means no problems of choking and everything, which means delightful user experience. And the second part is fabric, correct? Uh, we also have heard about fabric. So with fabric, we will have direct access of UI manager to the JavaScript runtime via JSI, which means we can synchronously create views from JavaScript itself. Totally game changer, right? So I think by this, all of the things which we have been hearing uh, from quite time, which is JSI, Turbo Modules, and Fabric, uh, would make more sense to you and the filling gap is filled which was where the hell the C++ came into the picture and how this uh, bridge was working previously what is going to happen next the dots are connected now and I hope uh, you can uh, whenever you uh, hear about turbo modules or fabric or GSI next you are not afraid it's quite simple right so these are the resources which I followed. Quite, 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 not quite, very useful resources. I learned a lot from it and I would highly recommend it to you. Thank you for staying with me uh, for so long. You can connect to me uh, on Twitter or LinkedIn or wherever you want. I will be available to take your questions uh, in the virtual booth.